All right, you're on. So, what's your name? Uh, John. John, nice John. to meet you. Nice we've you. we've met a few times around here. You've been at City Hall, um, protesting, sleeping here, dropping by. But uh, lately, I've seen you a lot. You've been staying down here. About a month and a half. Give or take, yes. Okay, and we're nobody's really talked to you much about the protests. It sounds like. No, uh, uh, I have multiple disabilities. One is my hard of hearing, and it makes it difficult for me speaking with others. Conversation is really frustrating. Well, appreciate you talking to us. Um, so yeah, here's the vigil, and you light candles um, every night. I just put a couple of things of interest. Yes. This is what I was telling you. This is the shower to the people. Okay. I Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's when they're around. Um, and then this is something I'm excited about. We were just talking about rights. And uh, let me go ahead and take this out. This is a new addition. Jack. Do you know Jack? Uh, I don't I do, I'll, I'll start going. Okay. Jack was here earlier, and I'll introduce you. Okay. Um, he brought us this paper. I'm going to show you. Here we go. Here's all this stuff. Here's an article. Whoa. Criminalization. I'm saying it for these folks because my uh, <laughs> my resolution isn't probably good enough for you guys to read it. Oh, here's the chat room. Um, yeah, criminal. The use of criminal enforcement to deter or punish homeless people. Oh, here's criminalizing of homelessness. Yeah. Um. Let's see. So this is the first article saying that you have a right to reclaim property. Sure. But right after that, we have this. September 5th. Um, Ninth Circuit Court says Los Angeles can't, throw it away. can't treat personal belongings of homeless individuals like trash. And that applies to us too. That applies to everybody, every city. Sure. And so they can't throw it away. They can't, yeah. they can't quote abate a nuisance they ruled that the only time that they could possibly do that is that there is a serious risk to health or safety of the public and that doesn't mean that they saw some gnats it means serious risk like a bomb threat um, this is the sidewalk use this is where you are here's a pedestrian use zone that they were talking about and everything in here that they say we can't do see use yeah. of the pedestrian use zone by a person who's not a pedestrian and because of that we can have newspaper boxes because it's outside that and that's what um, so that's why I say if a policeman bothers you as soon as they approach you in fact mm. yell for us and we're gonna grab the book and the camera and we're gonna do what we do every morning and tell them what the law is and then they'll run back into City Hall and say I, I don't have something give me something else because City Hall just wants it taken care of and they run through about three different laws and finally they're like give me a break can you just move out of this pedestrian use zone can you just maybe clean up your bag a little bit they ask us for something small we say absolutely and we do it and that's the end of it and then they go away it's it's kind of cool i don't think these guys want to be used um so anyway oh, that's eighth amendment yep so there is no yeah. special constitution just for homeless people that's it might help you. it's sad that, that uh, somebody even tried to treat it like that thanks uh, oh thank you yeah got the camera anyway so you have one of those stories that I, I think is really amazing First of all, you're a vet. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people would really 
aware of the things that have gone on from like early spring, early summer around Portland here. It's unfortunate the circumstances of my disability, my multiple disabilities. Uh, even so, it's not what it costs for rent is like beyond what I can afford on my disability. I'm unable to work. Uh, medically retired from my profession, a truck driver, over the road truck driver. But down in the Pearl District, where a lot of people had camped, you know, things like uh, 14, you know, I'm sorry. They cleaned up a lot of the, the city, you know, cleaned up a lot of uh, arrested and or uh, moved a lot of the people that were camping, you know, stay, staying down that area, homeless people, ran them all off, cleaned up all their stuff, impounded it. They did the same thing over on the uh, other side of the river by the Hawthorne Bridge with the viaduct over there. Others that were sleeping on the I-5 viaduct, the I-84 viaduct, they've been police have systematically been running everybody off. Where are they gonna go? You know, these people that like, normal people that have, you know, society wouldn't really see them. But they're giving them no place else to go other than the parks, uh, Burnside Bridge, uh, congregating downtown. Everybody, the citizen, normal citizen complains about all the homeless people and the mess they leave behind, to give them no place to go. Uh, they wouldn't be congregating on the sidewalks. They wouldn't have run them out from under the freeway, out of sight, out of mind. No, they run them out outside of my put them out there. You know, they run, keep running them off, run them off. It, let's put it this way, sleeping on the Burnside Bridge, I don't feel safe there. Every place I've been run off around Portland here to sleep for the night, of all the places, City Hall here. I sleep here because I'm sa I feel safe here. I worry about somebody could try to come up with a me with a stolen taser or, or, or urinating on me. But yet, yeah, I sleep here also because you know, being on a uh, housing list from home forward, uh, Central City Concern, uh, TPI, there's one other I remember for eight months down, better than eight months. What else do I have to do, you know? I'd like to have a place to live. What's, I mean. So when you have I'm a place to I'm live. Frustrated. It's hard, it's difficult. When you have a place to live, but it's a sidewalk, what makes, what makes one sidewalk better than another sidewalk? It's safer, I feel safer. You, you feel know? safer here? Yeah, I could go down over the park down there, a block away. I don't feel safe down there, uh, which is really unfortunate. I don't have to worry about my stuff getting stolen from here, from me here. I don't have to worry about somebody threatening me or, or somebody that's intoxicated or high uh, on drugs. You know. So, there's a couple of things that keep it safe, and it depends on cooperation and it depends on communication. So, um, someone might come up to you and say, you don't drink, but let's say you did. Is that offensive if I just suppose, pretend that you drank? And I saw you with a beer can and it was open. I would say, that's breaking the law and we don't do that at this protest. Because we're reaching out to the public, we don't want to incur complaints. Um, that gives us safety from, say, in the morning, when the cops come, they're a little bit less aggressive if we don't have, you know, fights or law breaking or whatever, you know. Um, so for some people, that's a problem because they don't want to be told what to do. This is a public sidewalk. So it's a real challenge to say it's a public sidewalk but you're here because of us, because we're together keeping it safe. We're a family and we're doing a protest. So that means that when you have somebody who comes down and sleeps by you, 
but we don't know you don't know we'd like you guys to get to know the person and kind of give them the orientation about what's going on and the first thing we should be doing is giving people a sign yeah. You you said that you'd fly the sign, and you took the one I had about don't yeah, seize my I, I belongings. Think I for a couple minutes, and then I ended up getting self-conscious, you know. Yeah. Well, you uh, just put it out uh, near you, uh, on the wall, or out by a tree. You don't have to hold it. Yeah. It's doing interviews, playing stuff. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, it, I believe in you know protesting for what my rights, you know, my constitutional rights. Uh, the amendments to the Constitution, all of that, the, the, which were ratified, adopted and ratified by the state of Oregon. And, and I understand these rights, like the first, the fourth, the eighth, the fifth, I mean, like, the ones that really matter, uh, that right to peacefully pro assemble and protest I, for redress of grievances against my government here. Uh, In my position, I'm ashamed of my government, both at the city, local, the state, and the federal level. Because uh, there's no bipartisanship. I mean, it's, uh, well, it has a simple, uh, I wish I could have a job like this where I wouldn't get fired for life, you know? Wouldn't get fired for lying. life. Lying. 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 Oh, lies, you, know? <laughs> you don't get fired I for mean, lying. It's, or if maybe it's, like it's, a police officer who can it's, 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 uh, it's keep his job after shooting somebody it's, in it's the back. It's absurd whether you're a politician, a public official like a police officer. Uh, the, you know, they get to write the laws and enforce them. You know, 90% of all politicians are lawyers. But what do lawyers do? They make and write laws. You know, uh, bend them. Uh, cheat on them, lie, and they don't fire. Can I it's ask you a question? like a, a, a individual is elected into office, poorly elected into office at that. Uh, I use that office for their own gain and the blatant about it. And the, in their own ignorance, think that the general public is going to believe it. The silver or gold spoon, maybe, yeah. <laughs> you know, I worked hard. I drove a truck for 14 years. I paid taxes. All that of all the taxes are paid, road use taxes. You see the bumper sticker on the back of trucks. As a matter of fact, I do own the road. Well, yeah, no other business pays more in taxes than uh, owner operators or companies that operate commercial motor vehicles. Yet, if anything that Joe Blow Consumer, federal government, or anybody gets, is brought by truck. So much by road. I can't do it anymore. I'm medically retired. It's fr frustrating. I can't get another job. I got bad news. I got back. Didn't you get this. harassed by cops recently? Like, just, weren't you telling me? Yeah, there was a Vancouver, Washington last year. Oh. And uh, it was uh, on my way, two days after I had surgery, uh, going over to pick up a prescription. And uh, about a half block away, going on the sidewalk, and take my iPod out. I was crossed at the intersection, the crosswalk, uh, and stopped, accused of being drunk. Uh, which I was, uh, uh, jaywalking in a crosswalk, uh, asked to produce ID without reason. Yeah, it was police harassment. And you said that you were told by three different cops three different reasons? Uh, no, the cop had told, gave me three different uh, I walked up to the intersection and I'm taking my iPod out. I, across the street, Clear across the parking lot, I know this police officer, this cruiser sitting there. Well, uh, 40 feet away from the crosswalk, a car pulls out of the gas station, goes around the corner, and he's out on that. Andrews? Andrews, like Andrews from Fourth Plain Walgreens there. Uh, he went around, and 
I crossed at the crosswalk, got my iPod out, I looked back up, and that, now the cop is like right there getting out of the car. He's asking if I was okay. He goes, yeah. He goes, well, it looked like you're stumbling drunk. I said, well, it's unfortunate. I haven't drank alcohol in five years. And then he goes, well, that car almost hit you right there. And no, all that car was 40 feet away from me. He goes, well, also said, said I was well, we're jaywalking. I said, well, it's funny. It looks like a crosswalk, a marked crosswalk to me. And uh, you asked what's my ID, and then I, I asked him if he would call his supervisor out here to explain to him why he stopped me, you know. And he asked me politely two more times for my ID, and I said, I'm not going to give my teeth until your supervisor comes out here, and you explain to him why you're stopping me, what reasons you have for stopping me. And, you know, he called his supervisor out here. I got a... Uh, uh, I was politely told that I could go on my way, and I don't know what ever became out of it. But it's just another example of our government, our public servants going too far. It's the unfortunate society, the world we live in, but it's there for a reason. However, since 9-11, Twelve years ago, how long has it been? Uh, no other president, sitting president, before or after, has done more to rewrite or suspend the United, United States Constitution and create uh, uh, an essential police force out of the Homeland Security to enforce the uh, laws that were created as a result. George W. Bush, thanks. Is a lot of the reason why the cops act the way they do. Uh, this is, they don't, they target, they look for terrorists. Everybody. Before my grandmother passed away seven years ago, uh, a suspicious package, you know, harassed for it, you know, potential uh, terrorist activities. I mean, it's just, what happened to common sense? Is so you served, can I ask when you served? Uh, in the 80s. I won't go in, I can't go any more than that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It, can, is, can you tell us, I had a viewer come over here, look. Now, mm -hmm. see, I wonder why he went in the service. Why'd you go in the service? Can I, you tell I really us? Not, about that. okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, that's fine. They were curious, but. Um, it wasn't by choice, let's put it that way. Okay. So. I was young and made a couple mistakes, and it was the alternative choice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I get you. So. That's an interesting story. Um, but we still appreciate however reason you went in that you did i mean even if i don't like what the military is being used for you know very often you know i, I still have to appreciate people who are dedicated to our country you yeah. know that's my personal opinion i'm sure you hear all sorts of opinions yeah. from wearing that marine badge <laughs> uh, but i appreciate you for that and I really like what you have to say about this protest and about our Constitution and the fact that when a police officer harasses you, you can make them explain what law. Well, yeah, I have two choices. I could tell them, hey, look, I'm a veteran, I'm disabled, leave me alone. If I'm really angry enough, you know, and they pretty much do. Or I could, you know, I'd stop and think about it. You know, apply what I've learned in law school. Which is unfortunate because they don't. If you cite code, which they know, they don't like it because you know what they know. But when you apply words like arbitrary, capricious application of the code, they don't like it because you know more than they don't. And they feel threatened. And for the moment, they've got the badge. They have the authority. They can do whatever they want. I have the right to appeal it, and uh, there are multiple steps to an appeals process. If you don't like the answer you're giving it, the lower, just keep proceeding all the way up. So when a police, uh, when, who are you appealing? What are you appealing? 
A police well, gives a, you a I ticket was, or... I, I have a medical marijuana card, an Oregon State medical marijuana card. I have valid medical it's for the card. Uh, I was cleaning my paraphernalia sitting in the park rather discreetly on the the park rangers uh, I held my hand like this. They talked to me and he asked me what was on my hand. I showed him. And he wrote me a ticket for possession of less than an ounce. He didn't ask me. I think he was uh, assuming that I did. He wrote me a ticket for possession of marijuana, which I didn't have. I, just because I wiped my hand does mean I have it. He didn't search me. He didn't ask to search me for my possessions. He just assumed that I did. It's like I appealed that. I'm waiting for the results of that appeal. He also wrote me a ticket for possession, which, you know, I'm, if I go to court on that, I'll have my moment to say, I asked the officer, well, did you have my right to question him? Yeah. So, my yeah. friend over here, she got a warning. She wasn't even doing anything wrong. They Association gave her, is yeah, uh, gave, not legal to do. The purpose in the code is to issue warning somebody that they're violating a rule. Make sure that they understand that there is a rule there, they're violating it. She wasn't even violating the rule. Right. You know, which is totally. Right. Well, um, so I realized that you guys have places to be in the morning a lot of the times. One fella said he was going off to the daily labor, he's got to get up early, and people have to take care of their business, go get showers, go eat. Um, but one of these days, we'll, we'll be here together when the police come. And. Uh, Gladly. You know, hang back, enjoy the show, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe take it for a spin yourself. Well, one time that I've slept here that late, was, was woken by a police officer, and he said I didn't have many things to pack it up and leave, and so I packed it up and left. So I try to make it a point to be gone before they get here, mm -hmm. without giving the satisfaction, giving me giving them the satisfaction of waking me up, telling me I have to leave. Uh, it's really also satisfying to tell them purpose, no. <laughs> uh, served by staying here that maybe somebody might get an idea that, hey, we're here for a reason. That, uh, it's like Cameron Witten and his uh, uh, hunger strike for a change, for recognition. Of, hey, look, there's a serious issue in the city of Portland. Some 2,000 people are homeless. The, and unfortunately, I have ha met a lot of the homeless people that have mental health issues, uh, multiple mental health issues, or uh, uh, disabilities. So you know, yeah. that can't work. My uh, my battery is but, dying okay. right now, but uh, we had six viewers, uh, including um, including a super. In closing, viewer. I gotta say one thing. Okay. Exercise a little compassion, mercy, do something, give a place to go instead of. I'm sorry, I just I'm sorry to get it better. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, right. So uh, we'll, we'll give you whatever. Uh, we got some coffee. Do you want coffee? Uh, it's kind of late. I'm, no, I'm okay. It's kind of late for coffee. But I'm, we'll have some in the morning. Well, that'd be awesome. I'd, yeah. That'd but, be awesome. Uh, but let me tell you, as newbies who were actually been here a while but nobody even really talked to you yet so yeah, this is kind of day one right. so i would put out some signs and and uh you know talk to everybody about these ordinances um because that comes before the coffee and the donuts and everything right. else because uh we had people abuse us and really cause problems. People who were violent, people who had, you know, illegal activity, and, and they ate our food and they drank our coffee, and, and it was just like, wow, we don't need this. Yeah. So I am sorry that it's a little hard to get into the groove together. We should have, you know, talked to you more. Um, but. No, the, the one thing about this, like, I, I tried, you know, get involved. I talked to Cameron several times ran flyers down to uh, Tent City and messages back and forth. Yeah. It's, it seemed like there's uh, a 
not just protest, but it was like the other elements, more pro, uh, more zoo, made it more surreal than it, you know, the whole purpose for being here is just like, say, hey, they're protesting the way, I'm like, I've got a tent. Why run me off someplace that the general public can't see me? I can camp in peace, you know? No, without violence, without drugs, without alcohol. And I'm not making a mess. Why run me right off from the one place where I'm out of sight, out of mind, drive me right out, smack down to the public, where the public start complaining about all the nuisance for the homeless people? That's essentially what it's becoming, a nuisance yeah. that the general public has to keep. Well, see every day. and out of sight, out of mind didn't really work because homelessness increased. Yeah. Apparently, they really need to see people because they've they've really shown. They've they've really. It's a logic. It's a logical question. Their uh, eyes. Why the illogical behavior? Yes. I mean, it, 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 it's a. Yeah. Well, here we are. So, anyway, yeah. thank you, John. Hey, have a good, have a nice talk with you. Thanks for the interview. All right, you guys. Uh, I'm gonna turn it off for a second. Save the video.